when anthropology thought we had it all figured out. That is to say, aha, we know how it works now. All we have to do is make people culturally aware that their own ways are learned and that everybody has their own learning and everything will be great. As long as we can all people teach people culture. And so the idea of culture as it was introduced by anthropology was the idea that the way we become human as a process is one in which we learn things and we learn certain patterns. But as soon as we introduce this idea into the world, the question arises, well, does if, if we are all cultural beings, does everyone have their own culture? And is the world simply composed of different culture groups? And so as anthropology introduced this idea of culture into the world, it was very successful. At the time that Ruth Benedict was writing in 1934, not too many people used the word culture. Today, you're liable to hear it every day, or at least once a week, someone will talk about their culture, or that's what I do in my culture. And so we've become very accustomed to believing that people come in these culture groups. And so I want, as we're talking about the idea of culture, and this is one reason why uh, Truyo said that we needed to say adieu culture or goodbye culture, I won't go that far because I think we still, since it's talked about all the time, we still need to understand it. But I want to, you to be aware of five ways in which culture can be in some ways misused or should be, uh, you should be careful of these things. In other words, culture doesn't necessarily solve everything. So the first point I would want to make is that culture is always changing. It doesn't stand still. People aren't frozen in time. As we've talked about, there is some degree of consciousness about your behaviors and some degree of thinking, and you're always trying to think about and modify those behaviors. So we have to be careful when we believe that, you know, oh, that's the, the way it's always been, that people in other societies or even in our own society are simply following out these traditions which don't change. People are always thinking about changing, tweaking, maybe even discarding cultural practices. So the things that, and whenever we look at people in other societies, even the societies we read about, like the Naki Rama, they don't stay the same. We always should be careful to not put them in a box. And so, like I say, we have to be careful that culture doesn't become a new form of determinism. Why do they do that? Oh, that's their culture. And then, so that becomes another excuse. It's not a way of saying, hey, you know, the, the reason people are are superior or inferior is because of their culture. It doesn't determine people in that way. It gives you a template for learning and it's always changing. One person who sort of expressed how many, how many anthropologists uh, think about culture wrote in 1852, I put that in there because he wrote men, we would say humans today, people make their own history. So this is a very important point that people are always active and dynamic in making their own history. But as he said, they don't make it just as they please. We don't always get to choose what's been going on. So what I was saying is, we don't make it under circumstances chosen by ourselves. So we are all actively creating our society culture history, but 
we didn't choose the circumstances to do this work. The circumstances are found and transmitted from the past. So we inherit these and we transform them, but we're always working within a given tradition. We didn't make up the language that we speak. We might modify it. We might have our own style. We might add to it. We might write a really cool theatrical production that helps us understand language better, but it, the structure was already in some ways given to us. Anybody heard this before? Anybody know who wrote this? Yeah, I never tell you who wrote it until the end. This is uh, our friend Karl Marx when he was reflecting upon the fact that the, he, you know, the, probably uh, his most famous work is the Communist Manifesto when he was trying to, to incite revolutionary behavior. But later on, he was sort of thinking back as to, hey, why didn't it work out? And why did they, why did the French elect Louis Bonaparte or the, you know, the nephew of Napoleon uh, again? And one of his things that he came to is that even as people were trying to be revolutionaries, they were working within uh, the past traditions. So as he put it, the, the past weighs like a nightmare upon the brains of the living. It's his next sentence. But it gives us a good sense of you know, how culture society is dynamic and ever changing, but at the same time, uh, inherited or inheriting things from the past. Cultures are always borrowing things from their neighbors, trading with other people, migrating, mixing it up, learning things, putting in new words, borrowing new terms. There's no such thing as a completely isolated and bounded society. If you get too isolated and bounded, you're going to die. And so we like to think sometimes that we can draw borders and put up walls around and keep people from coming in and out. But in fact, interacting and borrowing and being in touch with each other has been an essential part of human history and culture is formed from interaction and being able to talk about different things as much as it grows up from within. People are never going to be all the same in any given social formation. So there might be some patterns to life, but people are always going to be, there's going to be some people who are rebels, or there's some people who don't believe it. So co-sleeping is a good example. In our society, we tell people not to do it, but a lot of people do it anyway. So there's never going to be a society, ours or others, that is completely homogeneous, where everybody is the same. So whenever you think about a tradition or a, something that we say about other people, you always have to remember that people everywhere question their customs, question their beliefs. Some people are outliers. Some people are, are just not going not gonna to do the thing. A lot of people have sometimes used culture as an excuse for unequal relationships between groups. And so whenever we think about culture, we don't want to get away from understanding that some people are able to impose their own beliefs or patterns upon others, and not everyone has access to the same resources. So it doesn't excuse or justify inequalities between different 
people or between within a society or between societies. One example of this, the one that I kind of would question in small is Tronic's doctor's orders box, which is a good box. It's good to have, as I said, it's good to be aware of other people's patterns and ethnopediatrics. But the end of, at the end of this, he says this. I know I have helped residents, pediatrics residents, broaden their views when their lectures on good mothering are replaced by such comments as, what a gorgeous baby. I can't imagine how you manage both work and three others at home. Now, on the one hand, that's great, wonderful. Cultural ideas of being able to have sibling care, and you don't want to be mean to somebody. But what if the woman's like, dude, <laughs> you think I want to do this? What I would really like is access to child care. What I would really like is not to have to work and have three kids at home. It's really hard. So again, just be careful. Just because someone is doing something different doesn't mean it's because it's their culture and it has nothing to do with their position in society vis-a-vis -vis other uh, more powerful elements or places in which we, we make it really hard to afford things like childcare. Hmm. So some people have used culture as we've talked about in this deterministic way. That is to say, it's like, oh, that's what they do because it's their culture. And they've bounded off and put these borders around people and said, aha, all the people in this group are going to be determined by their culture. And they're all pretty much the same. And the reason people have different access to resources is because of their culture, not because of the ways in which they were, uh, didn't have the same uh, opportunities. If your idea of culture is that, that is deterministic, bounded, where everybody's homogeneous, what's, what's that another way or what, what old idea is that simply putting a new word on? Ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, it's basically doing all the ethnocentrism again. Oh, but you're just using culture to do it. I guess I'm thinking a particular kind of ethnocentrism in which people grouped other people together and said, all the people in that group are living in their own world and that's why they are the way they are. You know, people from there, that place, or, you know, they don't work as hard as we do because what do we say when we do that? Yeah, race. So, you know, Oh, we don't call them this. We call, if you're just turn, changing your words around, but your ideas have remained exactly the same, it's not helping anybody. So, you know, if you're, you know, to, uh, I guess to be, to be, to be blunt about it, uh, if, if you're simply swapping a term like African-American for black, but your ideas are exactly the same or worse terms, then, you know, it doesn't help. If we can understand how people are raised in a society and have differences and have unequal access to resources and still talk about this as learned behavior, we're fine. But if we're simply swapping around one word for another, that's not so Last one. 
we've talked about this already, but when we think about being culturally relative, it's a way of understanding where other people are coming from. But it's not to say, oh yeah, in their society, in that society, they, they just have segregated housing. That's just the way they are. Who can change it? So we can understand why people have certain ideas and why those ideas have been made into laws but that doesn't mean we're gonna let everything go in part because of the power and inequality differences we talked about before. So cultural relativism is not an easy way out. It's not, it's not you know, we're all gonna love each other and all be hippies together. We can uh, use it to understand other people, but it's still gonna involve some pretty difficult choices uh, and some difficulties uh, in, in trying to, to navigate uh, the kind of world in which we've, we've made. 